Oh, look at this. Look at the start, you guys. This is. Wait, sorry. I didn't mean to restart. One second. Let me let me start this here. Look at the very start here. The very start, USSR has the most GMs. Even at the very start, they have the most. They have 11 Grandmasters. 1950, the very first time Grandmaster, there were Grandmasters, they had 11. France had two, Yugoslavia had two, Hungary had two, USA had two, the United States had two also. Uh, Fischer and Ruszewski. That's crazy, though. Okay, let's go ahead. Ooh, Argentina and USA, USA, USA. USA, USA, USA. Whoa, but look at this. So it's amazing. Russia has the most. I mean, USSR, Russia has the most. But then it's USA and Yugoslavia. That's interesting compared to the modern world. Very interesting. What I'm curious to see, though, is you, get, you see you guys have stopped it again. The World Championship match was in 1972. Um, I don't know why it's giving me that subscribe button. But the World Championship match was in 1972. And I want to say there's a big uptick in U.S. Grand Masters after that. There's one Canadian Grand Master. Um, there were two Canadians. One of them was um, was Yanovsky. The other one in 1973 would be... There was Yanovsky and... Who was the other Canadian GM? No, it wasn't... Oh, it was Duncan Suttles. Was Duncan Suttles a GM in 1973? Are you guys sure about that? I mean, maybe he was. Um, was he? Was he a GM in 1973? I don't think Spraggett was a GM in the 70s. I thought he became a GM in the 80s. That's that's why I didn't say Spraggett. Um, I think. Let me see. Uh, I don't know. I, it was one of those two, though. But yeah. Okay, Glasnost, the end of the Soviet Union. But look at this this number, 80, 80. Um, they have 80 GMs at the end. Yugoslavia, 44, US, 34. What's amazing to me when I look at this list is that um, is that uh, you, uh, you don't have, like, the modern superpowers on this list. Like, US and USSR, you have, but, like, I mean, the Chinas, the UKs, you don't have them anywhere on this list, which is kind of interesting. By the way, I think they skipped a little bit, but you know what's amazing about this list, you guys? And this, this I will say, I think this, I don't know where how this ends, but I'm, I'm going to say this. This video is going to show the absolute power that Vichy Anand is because you look at this list, year 2000, there are no, India is not even, India doesn't even have 13 grand masters. And India is probably going to end up like number four, number three by the end, which just shows the power of Anand. Let's see. Where is India? India is going to pop up soon. Okay. Okay, now we start to see the rise of China. China is getting on the list with 35 GMs here. China and, and India are going to... Oh, India is here. India is 37. India actually appeared here. See, India is here at 37. Where does India first appear? What year? Okay, India first appears in 2013 with 35. So let's see. Look at India. Wow. Wow, look at that list. That's actually pretty amazing. Um yeah, look at uh look at look at India. Number 4, number f or number 5 in climbing. They're they're going to be higher. I'm actually surprised that uh China is so far down cuz they have so many strong GMs. It's kind of surprising to me. Um uh, but still good list. Russia with 240, just insane. Insane. 240 versus 96 and 95. India is 70 now. Yeah, yeah. Netherlands was on there the entire time. True, true. Um, but yeah, India is going to, I bet I'm going to make a prediction. India is going to be number two on this list within the next, um, you know, COVID permitting, of course. But if, if COVID if COVID goes away and or over the board chess returns like it was before the pandemic, India is going to be number two on this list within the next five years. Easily number two. 
um, within the next five years. Guaranteed. Absolutely guaranteed. And this is what in Zurich, I guess. Oh my God. What is this? What is this? What am I even wearing here? I'm wearing like a dress shirt with like a tie. Like who is this guy? This is gross. This is absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Um, Oh my gosh. Terrible. Terrible. Oh, and by the way, this is a video from 2015. And you see, I still play the same line with black. I still play this Knight BD7 line in the Queen's Gambit decline. So even six years later, I still play the same line. So that's how you know this is a very good opening to play. A very solid line with Knight BD7. Ah, I played Knight H5 in this game. Okay, there's my first look. Oh, that was the, yes, you guys, that was the, that was a look of pure confidence, right? That was a look of pure confidence. That was pure confidence knowing that I'm going to win when I looked away, right? Pure confidence. The, 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 the head look was pure confidence. Oh, by the way, you guys, oh, oh, by the way, you were asking, oh my God, you're, you know, you were asking about this old guy, this old guy here with this camera. Why is he allowed to take, take pictures? I'm going to tell you guys a horrible story. So in Norway chess, I think it was 20, uh, let me, let me get the exact year. Just, um, uh, one second. Yeah, this is so, this is so sad actually. Um, uh, yeah. In 2015 in Norway chess, um, was it 2015? Yeah, it was 2015. This game was played in February of 2015. This guy in the front row, uh, he died in June of 20, 2015. I'll tell you what happened. So in 2015, um, there was this tournament called Norway Chess a couple of months later. And in Norway Chess, in the very first round, Magnus Carlsen lost on time to Veselin Topla because he did not know the time control. And that evening at about 11.30 p.m., roughly, the fire alarms went off in the hotel. And um, there, was a, there was a joke that at the time that Magnus intentionally, like, he triggered the fire alarm because he was in such a bad mood from losing the game. Of course, it turns out this wasn't, this wasn't the case. But this guy in the front row here, he actually, um, during that... During the whole fire alarm and the chaos of trying to get out of the hotel, he he suffered a heart attack and he died. So it's like it's pretty it's pretty sad actually. It's when, when you, now now that you mention it, it reminds me. Um, yeah, really really sad. Yeah, because I mean, because basically you know when a fire alarm goes off, you're supposed to get out of the hotel and like you're in Norway, so you assume like a fire alarm. Nobody pulled the alarm. It's probably like legit and yeah. So it's yeah it's really so Magnus killed the guy. Magnus didn't trigger the alarm, but um yeah yeah it's very sad, very very sad. I think Levon actually, because the guy, the guys are Armenian here. I think Levon actually put something out uh, later during that tournament as well. So it's really, really sad. All right, let's keep going. Norway chess is brutal. Yeah, killed a, killed a guy. Ding broke a hip. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At some point here, I think I break the center with the E5. I don't know where. Yeah, Ding broke his hip in Norway chess. Yeah, Ding fell off a bicycle. Ding fell off a bicycle, broke his hip, and uh, he had to get surgery in Norway. Yeah. Norway is dangerous, you guys. Very dangerous place. Where do I break with do I break with F6 or E5 here somewhere I wonder somewhere in here I break it I don't know where Yeah I go bishop bishop D8 right surely I play bishop D8 here Got to go bishop D8 yep there we go good move I don't. I have to say, you guys, this is so bizarre watching this video. Like, just just looking, 
just looking at myself this is so bizarre like just i don't know i feel like i feel like i'm looking at someone completely different this just doesn't look like me i don't i don't know who this guy is but i swear this is not me it's just so weird so so weird um it's just it's bizarre it's really bizarre even honestly i swear even the way i'm moving the pieces looks looks weird relative to how i move pieces now like who is this guy Maybe it's just the angle. It could just be the camera angle, but it looks so weird. I look like a fixed income trader. Yeah, exactly, you guys. I look like the guy. Yeah, I'm just dressed way too properly. What in the what? A nine-hour stream? What's what's wrong? I've done nine-hour streams before. What what's what in the what? What do you mean? Okay, so here I here I here I jettison a pawn. This actually was a really good move in the game to give up the pawn and bring the bishop in because my bishops are super active here, whereas White's bishop and knight aren't aren't that active. Thoughts on Vichy as a person? I mean, incredible champion, very nice guy. Let's see what happens here. Okay, Vichy's deep in the tanks. I mean, he's just he's just completely lost here. There's Bishop D2 coming in. It's just like GG's pretty much. So I think Vichy resigns very shortly here. I'm not sure where, but he does. I look better before. I look better when I'm I look better in 2015 than I do now. Oh, that's very sad very very sad i think i actually look better now to be honest but um it's all relative no da no danny comments true true yeah i definitely look better now wtf yeah i mean i like to think i do i don't know i have the sideburns yeah i've got that whole i gotta say i don't know why but i got these weird sideburn thing i don't know if it's because I, I was a big fan of elvis growing up or what it is but yeah i've got that whole sideburns thing going which is kind of weird kind of weird um <laughs> i rock sideburns too Right. And maybe you rock sideburns in the 1970s, but hey. Anyway. <laughs> Why is nobody coughing? Good point. Oh, Bishop D2. That just ends the game. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you see there, you guys, that's also one of the weird things. Fans actually start clapping for um start clapping when the game ends. That's not something that regularly happens. Uh it's very, uh, very, very, very unusual to, to see people like clapping and, and applauding. But it's a small room. I mean, this was at the Zurich Chess Festival. This was a knockout in 2015. Um, and there were like probably like 50 people in the room. So it's kind of nice. I will say 50 people in a room cheering mean, is nice. But having 10,000 people watching your stream and cheering you on as you play in tournaments is uh, worth a whole lot more. I have to say that, um, to be fair. So that, that's, that's what I would add.